Hebrews chapter 12, in your Bible, in the, in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 12, and Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 12, and Revelation chapter 5. Thank you again for allowing me to be here. And thank you, uh, church, for taking very good care of me. Really, you, 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 uh, the, uh, you and your pastor have, taken, have, have been a real blessing and met all my needs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, also, something to pray for your pastor. Keep him in prayer. And because he is, he, he is, he gets hit by, you, you expect the enemy to hit you. And you expect opposition from the devil, the world, and, all, and the flesh and all these things. But he gets hit from uh, friendly, he gets a lot of friendly fire. Because we all have convictions about certain things, and there's pastors who have certain convictions about certain things, and they uh, attack them. And they're, they're not necessarily bad men, but, but they're, uh, he, you pray for him, because it's, it's heavy on him at times. Um, Hebrews, chapter, Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 12. Look at, let's look down a couple verses here. Chapter 12, verses 22 and 23. 22 uh, and 23. The Bible says, But ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on this. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you, Lord God, that we can preach and hear your word preached and hear your word taught. And uh, thank you, Lord, that we can fellowship with other Christians, Lord God. It's a blessing. And uh, we pray, Father, that you'd manifest yourself through the preaching of the word of God, that you'd, your Holy Spirit will have free reign here and be able to accomplish what you want to accomplish in our hearts, in our lives, and that you get glory. We pray, Father, that you'd bless everything said and done and that your people would be uh, blessed and uh, encouraged and that you'd get glory. And we pray that if there's any sa uh, unsaved person listening, that they trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. We ask these things in our Savior's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so in, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 23, he's talking, about, <clears throat> he's talking about the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. So there's an earthly Jerusalem, which is in Israel, and that, but, we're, but the, there's a heavenly Jerusalem, and it's called New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. And, uh, that's, and that's what we're going to talk about. We're just going to talk a little bit about heaven. Heaven. <clears throat> Look over in chapter, Revelation chapter 5. And I, and I say this because um, it, there's some great things that God has created. God has created some very wonderful things. Uh, if you ever, uh, one of the places I would love to go one day, I don't know, I have to probably wait till the millennium, which is fine with me, it's fine with me, uh, is going to Switzerland. Uh, there's nothing, there's nothing, you look at a blue sky, look at a blue sky in a, in a beautiful mountains, white snow-capped mountains, and under the, under the, uh, the snow is, uh, you know, there's there's somewhat of a brown where, you know, the trees and things don't grow well. And then you go down farther, there's a green. And there's just the color, and it's against a dark blue sky. It's a very beautiful sight. And uh, God has just created some very just, very just beautiful things. Yes. Uh, I enjoy this part of the country. I know, I know a lot of people don't, but I think this is a very beautiful part of the country. <clears throat> um, and... Uh, but one of the things that God has created is, is, a, is a local assembly. Yeah. And, and that's what this is. Amen. And uh, in, this is, in my view, in my view, this is as close as we're going to get to heaven on earth. Really. Um, the local church is supposed to be, is, it's a type of the spiritual church, which is the body of Jesus Christ. And, uh, but the body of Jesus Christ you can't see. <laughs> But the local church, you can. Yes, sir. And uh, it's, it's, uh, there's going to be a meeting that takes place in heaven that's going to surpass anything that we've ever, ever had um, taken part of. Uh, 
there's some, and there's some times when you're in some real good meetings and you can, you can feel the Holy Spirit moving and you can either through the singing and the, and sometimes the preaching isn't necessarily it's not because the preacher is really good i've gone into some services where the preacher i mean he's yelling and he's he's stomping all over the place and making lots of thunder uh but there's but there's no rain You're right. Well, that's right. <laughs> and then i've walked into another church meeting where the preacher because of his his health he's sitting on a stool and he's preaching from the word of god and he's not lifting up his voice very high i mean but boy you walk in there it's like the uh, like the comforter it's like a blanket just rolls right over you and you say wow the lord is here just ministers your soul and the first time i came back from from china I came back, my wife and I came back, we were pretty beat spiritually. And uh, we were just, a, just you, you, you just, wherever you go, sometimes you just, we were just worn out spiritually. And we got into a pretty good meeting, and there was a preacher there, who was, I remember he was preaching, and uh, sometimes when you, you hear preaching, sometimes someone will say something, and he, I remember him preaching a message, and he said, in the message, he said, winners never quit, Losers, uh, I'm sorry, uh, losers, ne- I'm sorry, quitters never win. Quitters never win, winners never quit. And I remember, and, it's, and it was, you know, by the end of the sermon, you know, it's, it's a whole bu- a bunch of emotion was released, and I was at the altar crying. It's just because, you know, several, sometimes this, you get in the meeting and the Lord deals with you. That's yes. all. Yes. And, and here in Revelation chapter 5, uh, where it's a meeting in heaven. It's a meeting in heaven. And, uh, and I say the local church is the closest, and I know your family's wonderful. You're, there's nothing that can replace your family. But we're talking about, uh, from a spiritual point of view, uh, I mean, uh, the closest you're going to get to heaven on this earth is, is in a good church meeting. Yes, sir. Yes. And the first thing, if you look at chapter, Revelation chapter 4, <clears throat> The center of all things is the Lord Jesus Christ. In this meeting in heaven, the center of all things is the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 2. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. There's a throne, and one is sat on the throne. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. Look at chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Uh, Look at verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne... And look at verse 13, look at five, chapter 5, verse 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. The, the center of all things, the center of the universe is the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. <laughs> And the center of heaven, the center of heaven uh, the, the, is there's that throne, and it's and, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. The center of a good meeting is the, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh, the, there's there's I mean there's sometimes men men have a tendency to complicate things, mm-hmm. but but the idea is we put uh, we put Jesus Christ first, and sometimes sometimes uh, sometimes men's methods men's teachings and men's hubris get in the way of that. Uh, I remember in our church, in our church in China, one of the things that we've had to deal, deal with is Christian psychology. And, that, and it just, it's just the leaven that gets in there. And I've had some folks say, well, you know, I, I, I heard, I heard, you know, uh, the first commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Well, and the second commandment is uh, to love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, the problem is I can't do that because uh, I can't love uh, others uh, as myself because I don't, I don't love myself. Oh, 
The problem is this. It, does, it says, love thy others, others as thyself. The first command, you're skipping over the first commandment. Right. You see, the love, when the love of God is shed abroad in your heart, you don't have, I don't have the capacity to love that many people. I really don't. But when I grow closer to the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God is shed abroad in my heart, and I have, I have, I have a love for other people that I would not normally have. That's good. I really do. And uh, it's, not because, it's not because of me loving myself uh, too much or too... I, I love myself too much is probably what the... And so when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, so when the Lord is controlling all of my being and my thoughts, my actions, my heart, then I can have some love for other people that I wouldn't yes. normally have. And the center of a good meeting is the Lord Jesus Christ, not oneself, not oneself. I know we all need to be ministered to, but it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the center of all things. And uh, sometimes these get lopsided. There's things, all kinds of things, because the Bible talks about everything and everything. So when, and through preaching, everything is addressed. But the center of all things is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that you know that there's when we sing these hymns. The, the, generally speaking, most of these hymns, the center of everything is God. Yes. Yes. And uh, I gave myself. I gave my. I gave myself for the this. The Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, it, the whole center of the hymn is yes. the Lord. Yes. And and talking about what He's done, and He's the center of our. Should be the center of our praises. Verse eleven, chapter four, verse eleven. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things for Thy pleasure. They are and recreated. Yes. He is the center of everything. He should be, and He should be the center of all of us. Yes. When, when without Jesus Christ, you may have a good marriage, you may have a good family, you may have. The Lord has blessed you, and, and you, you may have had a, a good upbringing, so you, there's some extra baggage that you don't have. But when Jesus Christ is not the center of things, things are off yes. balance. Yeah. They're not, they're off. And the other thing about this meeting in heaven, look at uh, chapter 5, verse 1. Uh, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written, a book written. Where was the book? It's in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Look at uh, chap, uh, chap, uh, verse uh, 5 of chapter 5. And one of the elders uh, saith unto me, uh, weep not. No, verse, we'll start at verse 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. In heaven, the word of God is opened. Yeah. Yes. And a good meeting here, uh, the word of God is opened. Yeah. The word of God yeah. is open. <clears throat> uh, the word of God is open. And when it, the word of God is open, the Holy Spirit bears witness of the truth and the Holy Spirit can work. Uh, you know, when the... <clears throat> When the disciples, when the disciples, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, the disciples, you know, were, they were scared. And they were in that upper room, and all of a sudden the Lord appeared unto them, and they were, they were surprised. And uh, he said, he said fear, fear not. He also upbraided them for their unbelief. But when he, you know what he did? He opened their understanding of the scriptures. The Bible says he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. The Bible, the holy, the words of God were opened. <clears throat> were open. We have the words of God. And uh, another, shortly before that, uh, another two were walking on the road to Emmaus. And, and the Lord appeared in the, in the midst of them. And he says, hey, what are you guys talking about? You don't know? He said, nope, don't know. And he, the Lord started talking with them. And they started talking to the Lord about what had happened. And, you know, they're telling the Lord Jesus about this. They didn't recognize him. Right. And then finally he sat down and, and exp he said, you know, he told them, oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets and to believe everything that was written. And he started expounding the scriptures to them concern, about everything concerning himself. And they said, you know what they said later? Didn't our heart, after they realized, didn't our heart burn within us? 
and the, the word of God is open. And it's the word of God that gets the work done. Yeah. It's the word of God. I mean, you can have methods. We can have, uh, uh, we can have all these programs. And, and they're, some of them are, are not bad. But in the end, it's the word of God. A life is changed because of the word of God. And uh, it's, it's through, it's through the, the changing. It says being... In Romans chapter 12, it says, transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. How is your mind renewed? How is your mind renewed? Oh. It's the Word of God and the Holy Spirit in con conjunction and doing things. Do you, do you understand when you got saved, if you're saved, when you got saved, there are things you didn't even realize were sin. Yeah. And it wasn't until it, 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 the Word of God gave you light on it. it you, that Word is a lamp, and it gives you light on You know, my thinking is messed up. Yes. My thinking is, is, is fouled up, and, and, and there's something wrong with my thinking. And that's one of the reasons, and I'm, I'm just like you. Hey, my flesh is no different. Uh, this world has a pull. And every time we are on the internet or watching TV, all that stuff is going in, filtering in through this gate and filtering in through this gate and going into our heart. And, and, it's, and it influences your mind, influences your mind. And what happens is you need the word of God opened and it sheds light. And when, there, when there's light in there, it, you, you, bats don't like light. Bats like the dark. And if and they just in that stuff, uh, the word of God is open in a meeting yeah. and it's preached and expounded on and talked about. In Ephesians chapter four, it says, uh, it says um, uh, renewed in the spirit of your mind. In Romans chapter 12, it says transformed, uh, transformed by the uh, by the renewing of your mind. And this is what the word of God does. It does. It changes your life. Yeah. You realize I'm doing wrong here. This is wrong. The direction I'm headed on. The, the Lord says this. This is the Lord's point of view on this. And I realize my life or this aspect of my life is, is not in, in line with this. So I need to put more emphasis and more effort into changing my life into con conforming to the Word of God. Yeah. You understand? It's not conforming to the preacher. Really, because it's not conforming to an individual because we're all different. Yes, we, we, you have taste that I, you spend money on things I would never spend on, money on. <laughs> and I probably spend money on the things you probably want to spend money. It's because, and, and it's, it's, you understand God created us as individuals. The only thing, the, 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 what's the absolute truth? I have, I have views about certain things and you have views about certain things. Who is right? Who is wrong? Yes, it's the right. Bible. Yeah, it's the yeah. Bible. And, and there's some things that they're ma it's not a matter of right and wrong. It's a matter uh, this person likes, uh, this person likes, uh, I don't know, this person likes uh, Coca-Cola. This other person says, I would never drink Coca-Cola. Okay. Oh, maybe that's a bad example. <laughs> what I'm saying is, w whether you like blue or green really doesn't matter. What matters is, what, what is God's view of this? Yes. What is God's view of this? Yes. And that's the Word of God. He, get, he goes, He enlightens. The Word of God enlightens, enlightens, enlightens. And in a meeting in heaven, this, the Word of God is opened up. And, uh, and if you look over in chapter 5, look at verse 8. And look at verse 8. And the Bible says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and 20 elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. So in a good meeting, there's, there's prayer yes. going on. Yeah. And that prayer, and it, it, it produces an odor, it permeates the yes. atmosphere. The atmosphere of a good meeting is just not the same as the atmosphere of uh, going into a drugstore or a uh, or a supermarket. Yeah. It's it's just different. Yeah. You go into a Walmart and then go into the go into a, a a building where there's a church meeting and the atmosphere is different. Yeah. Yeah. And it's affected by prayer. I mean, 
when you have, when you have believers meeting together, uh, if you're saved, you have the Holy Ghost inside of you. The Holy Spirit's inside of you, in you, in you, in you, in you, in you. And when you have a concentration like that, and there's people, I mean, no matter what problems you have, you're here for a reason. Yes. You're here for a reason. And you, want to, and you want to see the Lord Jesus Christ glorified. And you, have, and you need answers to problems. And you need the Word of God to give you light. And you, want to, and you want to worship. Maybe you want to sing praises. And when that's here, it, create, it does something to the atmosphere here. And you can't see it, but you can't see it, but it, 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 it does something within your heart. It does something within your, within your heart. Uh, when there's thankfulness and the Lord Jesus Christ is exalted, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an atmosphere that you don't, and it's not fleshly. And I'm saying it's not based on uh, rock music. Or it's not based on any kind of music that, that gets you going. I mean, the music, when it's singing praises to God, it does wonderful things. We had a, <clears throat> we had a woman that came to our, uh, our church in China, and uh, she was a she never. She was invited by somebody else, and she came. I didn't know she was coming. She came, and then uh, I remember seeing her while we're singing. She began weeping, and uh, I, I didn't. I, I didn't know what was wrong. I, and then and, and uh, she worked for the government, and she she wept. I mean profusely while we're singing. And she and I preached, and then and then after the service, she was she was gone. She never got saved. She was unsaved. She was unsafe. But when she walked into that building, she walked into that apartment building, she realized there's something here that's not out there. And it's not because of the four walls. Do you understand? It's because there's people here worshiping the Lord. It's the spirit that's permeating the air. And uh, that atmosphere, that atmosphere, can, uh, that's why when you get an unsaved person in here, and they hear the preaching of the Word of God, you get them to bring them to church, sometimes there's something, the Lord, and they sit there, and they, hear the, they sit there and hear the Word of God preach, it does something. Yes. It does something. Uh, there's a transaction that takes place, uh, whether they receive the Lord Jesus. I'm of, I'm of the, this. Oftentimes we'll have an unsaved person come, come in, into church. I don't pr start pressing them uh, to, to trust Jesus Christ. My view is this. I'll talk to them. If they say, I'll ask them for an S if they're saved, but I'll also give them some time because if they, if, if, if they continue coming, they'll either get saved. If I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, they'll either get saved or they'll quit coming. Right. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll pursue them and I'll ask them about their, you know, if they want to trust Jesus Christ. But sometimes, uh, especially some folks, you just wonder, I've asked some folks, are you saved? And they have a testimony where you just can't get a bead on, yeah, on them. Right. And yeah. so, uh, okay, if they're saved, they'll either start growing or they'll, yeah. they'll, 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 they'll get under conviction and they won't be able to stand it. Yeah. If I can help them, I want to help them. Oh, yes. yeah. But in the end, like I said, it's the Word of God that does the work. And it's the atmosphere, that atmosphere, and you got a bunch of believers together. Do you ever hear of a, there's a Chinese evangelist in the, 19, uh, in the 1930s and 40s named Sun Shanjie. Sun Shanjie. He, was, he, he, was, he was saved. He grew up in a Christian home. His dad was a Methodist pastor in China. He grew up in a Christian home, and he used to go out preaching, kind of like, kind of like John Wesley. He would go out preaching, but he had never been converted. He had never been converted. He knew all about Jesus Christ and knew a lot of the Bible in his head, but he had never trusted Jesus Christ personally. Wow. Wow. And what happened is he loved to study. He was, a, he was a very smart man, and he was also a very proud man. Uh, but he loved to study, and he went to America on a scholarship. He ended up going to Ohio University. He, he, Harvard offered him a full scholarship, but he didn't want to, for some reason, he wanted to go there. He wanted, he wanted to go to New York City. He wanted to go to, uh, uh, what's the school there? Uh, Columbia, I think. I think it was Columbia. Anyway, and he, got a, he ended up getting a doctorate degree, uh, and he started going because he wanted to, and he's, a lot of the church, his church was, you know, his father's church helped him out financially, and he felt guilty because, you know, he wasn't, he really didn't have any interest in serving the Lord. Not living a bad life, but no interest in serving the Lord. But she said, well, you know, maybe I should 
do something because they helped me out. He ended up going to, uh, there's a liberal uh, university in New York City called um, uh, New York University. I think it's, yeah, it's a very, 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 we call liberal theology. And, and, it, and they, they, they teach the Bible, but they don't believe the Bible. Okay. And they have, and anyway, and uh, it's, it's where you get a, anyway, uh, to make a long story short, he was, he was listening to someone give a testimony, some young girl give a testimony, and he, the Holy Spirit dealt with him. He got saved. He got saved. And then it started, he started telling his, and his, he was going to that university, it's a theo, studying theology, and his classmates would be, why are you here? You already, you have that, you have this uh, degree in engineering, why are you, why are you here? Uh, I mean, we, we envy you. And, uh, and he got saved, and he started reading his Bible, and he started witnessing to his classmates. <clears throat> in, a, in a school where they're teaching theology. <laughs> And they thought, what is going on with him? Maybe the pressure is getting too much to him. They, the school committed him to an insane asylum for several months, three months. And because he was witnessing to him, and in that, he said in that insane asylum, that was his, uh, where the Lord allowed him to study theology because he read his Bible through 30 some, some odd times in that, in that short amount of time. And he got out and he went back to China he threw his degree, he saved one for his mom and dad, but he threw those degrees over the ship. He said, there were nothing. And he went back home and he started preaching in China. I mean, he preached everywhere and the Lord was with him. I mean, the Lord was, I mean, his, his views for certain, certain things were not biblical, but he wasn't teaching the Bible. He was pre full, the Lord was using him. And it's that atmosphere. Uh, I mean, he, when he would preach, he would wear, a, he would wear a, some bad, uh, they had a, the gown, the Chinese gown. He would get up there and he started preaching about the, uh, about the, uh, if any, uh, he would talk about the old nature. And then in the middle of the sermon, he'd rip that gown off and he started, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And under it, and under it was a white gown. <laughs> And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, all things are become new. And he was, and the Lord was using him. And it was that atmosphere. And at the same time, there was another one, man who went to the same school, uh, same school, and that, that he did. He never got saved. His name is Wei Zhong. And he went back to China and he started the government three self church. And that's the church that, uh, that, that's the, under the hand of the government. And you see a, a road that goes this way and a road that goes this way, a line that goes that way, and, one, and you see the difference of the fruit. And there's a different, the atmosphere of, if you go into one, the atmosphere is different than the other. Yes, absolutely. Very different, very different. Uh, and, and, the, and, the, and, and in heaven, the, the prayers of the saints permeate the air, permeate the air. Uh, and, and that's not all, and that's not all. If you look over, if you look over uh, chapter 5, look over chapter 5, uh, verse, uh, verse, verse 9, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. One of the things <clears throat> when this meeting in heaven takes place, and this is what a local church should represent. Yes. I mean, uh, uh, local church, every local church is going to be a little bit different because the areas to the people you know, that, that's, that are ministered to are different. But it, but it says here, it says what? It says, uh, every uh, says, uh, has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of where? Out of every kindred, yeah. tongue, and people, and nation. We have brethren that are in Russia, that are in Ukraine, that are in Japan, Amen. that are in Brazil, that are in Mexico, yes. that are in every place on this planet. I mean, places where, where we wouldn't imagine. And what, what, what this meeting, what this meeting has in common, a good meeting, a good meeting, uh, everyone, everyone will have something in common, and that is they're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 
redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And there, you'll, you'll find in a good church, in a good church, there's going to be people who are very well educated, and then there's going to be people who are not well educated. I mean, you look at the disciples in Jesus Christ. You look at some of those disciples, they were, I mean, they were, <laughs> they, were they were not, they were, uh, in China, they were not very, they weren't, they weren't well educated. And then you got other disciples and you had other men like, I mean, like Luke. I mean, look at Paul and look at his personality compared to Barnabas. And then you got these different personalities together. Boy, I mean, they, sometimes if, if, if things weren't, didn't go, if they didn't, if they weren't, if they didn't have that one thing in common, you know, there's all these things, different backgrounds. And in here, there's people with different backgrounds, different backgrounds and different walks of life. People with, with, uh, who are single, people who are married, people who have children, people who are, don't have children, people who are old, people who are young, um, black, white, blue, red, green, every other color. <laughs> I mean, they, you know what you, we should have all in common in a good meeting? Come on. That you've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And when you're, and you're here and you hear the people singing, it should do something to your soul. It should, you should be able to say, well, my, uh, it says it sh your soul should be singing within. within. Yes. I mean, you should be happy. When I when I when we go through these presentation or when I when I think about folks when I, sometimes when the when the when when I see the Lord working in individual lives in our church in China, <clears throat> and I think, what have I in common with these folks? What I have nothing. I'm, I'm not Chinese. I will never be Chinese because, I mean, I can't do anything about this. Is what this is what God made me. I can't do anything about that. Uh, culture is different. Uh, uh, and uh, our backgrounds are different, but the Bible supersedes oh. culture. Yes. And uh, truth, it doesn't pay attention to whether or not uh, you're educated or uneducated. I mean, one plus two is three, no matter where you came from, no matter what your background is. That doesn't change with your, your point of view. And if your point of view doesn't line up with that, then you're wrong. And that's the same. If your point of view doesn't line up with this, then you're wrong. Then you're wrong. And everyone should have this in common, that they're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And I have, I have, I have, I have preached and ministered to folks who are much better than me. And I think, what a blessing, what a privilege it is. Because God doesn't need me, and I'm very thankful. And what I have in common with them is that we're redeemed yes. by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Well, that's a good meeting. And the closest you're going to get to that in this life is in a good local church. Yes. If you're here, you support your pastor. Yeah. You support your pastor. You support this and, and, and encourage, encourage the work, encourage the other people here. Yes. You have problems, they have problems. This is why we meet together, because it's, you know what, I see so-and-so attending, they have, they're going through this. If they can, att if they can still attend and, and drive all that way, or through all that, I can do the same thing. Praise the Lord. And uh, may the Lord bless you. <clears throat> Pastor? <clears throat> The altar call is open.